Welcome to Tech Lab. Today we are diving into PX4, the open source flight control software that powers everything from small quadcopters to advanced drones. In just a few minutes, you will learn how PX4 works from sensor and control loop to navigation, simulation, and beyond. Let's get started. <laughs> PX4 is an open source flight control software stack. You can think of it as the brain of a drone. The system that takes in sensor data, makes real decisions, and sends precise commands to the motors so the drone can fly smoothly and safely. The project started in 2011 at ETH Zurich as a research experiment, and today it's developed under the Drone Code Foundation, part of the Linux Foundation. Over the years, PX4 has grown into one of the most widely used autopilot platforms in the world, powering everything from hobby quadcopters to large industrial UAVs. There is also some experimental support for rovers and boats, but PX4's true strength is in flying systems, where its architecture is highly optimized. One of the PX4's biggest strengths is the hardware abstraction layer. It isn't tied to one board or processor. Most commonly, PX4 runs on PXHawk flight controllers built on STM32 microcontrollers. These boards provide redundant IMUs, stable power management, and reliable input outputs, making them the reference hardware for PX4. But PX4 also supports Linux-based platforms like Raspberry Pi. These allow you to pair a stable flight control with onboard AI for tasks like vision, slam, or swarming. When we talk about PX4's flexibility, the real hero is the hardware abstraction layer. In a flight controller, you've got tons of hardware, sensors like IMUs, parameters, GPS, plus input outputs for motors, servers, and communication. Normally, the flight control code would have to be written specifically for each board or processor. PX4 avoids that by using the hardware abstraction layer. Think of this as a translation layer. On one side, it talks directly to the hardware drivers, reading sensor data, handling PWM outputs, managing buses like I2C, SPI, or UART. On the other side, it presents a consistent interface to the flight control stack. The autopilot logic doesn't care what hardware it's running on, whether you are on a PX hub with STM32 microcontrollers or Raspberry Pi, the control algorithms, estimators, and mission logic run unchanged. Only the hardware abstraction layer adapts to the hardware differences. This is why PX4 is both portable and scalable. You can deploy the same flight stack on a tiny racing quad, a large drone or a research drone running ROS2 with heavy AI workloads, all without rewriting core flight code. At the heart of PX4 is a carefully layered software architecture. You can imagine it in two big parts, the middleware and the flight stack. The middleware is like PX4's nervous system. It connects hardware, sensors, and external systems, making sure data flows everywhere it needs to. It includes drivers for sensors like IMU, GPS, parameters, and rangefinders. It uses a published subscriber system called URB. Instead of modules calling each other directly, they publish and subscribe to topics. Think of it like a message bus, sensor data or control commands flow, and any module that cares about that data just subscribes. It communicates with the outside world using Mavlink, which is how PX4 talks to ground stations, companion computers, or even cloud systems. It provides a simulation bridge, so the exact same flight code can run in SITL or HITL without modifying anything. This design makes PX4 both reactive and parallelized. Modules respond immediately when new data arrives and many modules can run at the same time without interfering with each other. When we talk about the flight stack, we are talking about the software pipeline that takes sensor data and turns it into real-time motor commands that keep a drone stable and autonomous. 
It works in layer. The first step is the estimator. TX4 uses extended Kalman filters to fuse multiple noisy sensor inputs. IMU for motion, GPS for position, barometer for altitude, magnetometer for heading, and optionally optical flow for region. The output is a stable state estimate. Basically, the drone's best guess of where it is, how fast it's moving, and which way it's pointing. Second layer is control loops. PX4 uses cascaded PID controllers, meaning one loop fits into the next. The outer loop manages position and velocity. If the mission says hover at X, Y, Z, this loop figures out the orientation needed. The middle loop manages attitude, roll, pitch, and yaw. It tells the drone the right way. The inner loop manages angular rate. This is the fastest loop, directly telling the motors how fast to spin to achieve the desired attitude. This cascade allows PX4 to translate a simple command like go forward 5 meters into precise motor outputs in milliseconds. The last layer is mixer. Finally, the mixer converts control outputs into real actuator signals. For example, for multi-rotors, it adjusts individual motor thrust. This layered architecture is what makes PX4 both precise for stabilization and flexible across aircraft types, from a racing quad to a cargo drone. The next question is, where does PX4 actually run? The answer depends on your hardware. On a PixHawk, PX4 runs on an operating system called Natix Artos. Artos means real-time operating system. The big advantage is hard real-time guarantees. Every sensor read and every motor update happens exactly on time. In this setup, PX4 modules run either as independent tasks or inside work queues, depending on how they are scheduled. You can think of this like a race car ECU. Super lightweight, predictable, and built to always respond on time. Perfect for stable and reliable flights. If you run PX4 on a Raspberry Pi or even your laptop, it runs on Linux or macOS. Here, PX4 runs as a single process and each module becomes a thread inside that process. PX4 still uses work queues internally to organize modules, but Linux doesn't provide the same strict timing guarantees as Notix. The trade-off is you get much more computing power that makes this setup great when you need AI, computer vision, or SLAM running alongside flight control. Think of this like a powerful workstation, flexible and capable, but not as perfectly time precise as a dedicated ECU. PX4 comes with powerful simulation tools that let you test everything before risking real hardware. There is SITL, software in loop. PX4 runs directly on your PC as a normal program, while a virtual drone flies in a simulator like Gazebo. Developers use this to test new algorithms, missions, or even custom code. It's fast, safe, and requires no hardware at all. HITL or hardware in the loop. PX4 runs on a real flight controller like a PX Hawk, but the sensors and environment are simulated. This is closer to real world conditions because you are testing the actual flight hardware and wiring. HITL is often used for hardware validation autopilot tuning and pilot training without risking the drone itself. Together, SITL and HITL make it possible to develop and debug new features, tune controllers safely, validate complex missions and train operators, all without crashing a single drone. And that speaks for not just an autopilot, but a full platform for intelligent, connected and autonomous drone. Thanks for watching TechLab. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next deep dive into drone technology.